Hey everybody, it's the uh, Crypto Anarchist here and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. In today's video I'm going to talk about how Bitcoin SegWit turns its blockchain into a fractionally reserved blockchain. Now this differs from how fractional reserve banking systems work because a banking system is not a blockchain, but it's the exact same principle, the exact same idea. And basically what uh, the Bitcoin SegWit does is it allows the blockchain to uh, expand beyond its actual size. So just how uh, fractional reserves increase the supply of loanable funds uh, they fraudulently increase the supply of, lo of loanable funds uh, Bitcoin SegWit Bitcoin SegWit fraudulently increases the size of a blockchain that seems to be available now when I say fraudulently I only say fraudulently if they try to say it's the same type of blockchain as something like Bitcoin cash um, so like the the reason why fractional reserves are fraudulent within the bank banking system is because the money you use in fractional reserve banks is treated equal equally to the money used in non-fractional reserve banks so we we won't have that problem with bitcoin segwit and bitcoin cash because they're different they're completely different um so you know as long as they say they're you know that they're not the same type of thing and they're not there's no fraud there but uh, the issue with the uh, fractional reserve blockchain with SegWit is that uh, what SegWit does is it makes uh, Bitcoin turn into a settlement layer system and so basically the way to think of this is it's like Bitcoin's a public road network and the one megabyte block size is ba basically saying we're not going to make any more roads you guys just have to use buses and public transport um, so the bad news about this is the people pushing the uh, public transport in the Bitcoin ecosystem are people like Blockstream, uh, and in this public transport analogy, they would be the mass transit company owners, so, you know, they're going to profit immensely for it, so it, you got to take it with a grain of salt when Blockstream says you can't raise the block size, uh, they're going to profit massively if that's true, but anyways, uh, we're not, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing uh, using mass transit the way that the Lightning Network is designed to, but the issue with uh, mass transit is that uh, when you have more transactions recorded, like if one transaction or one block entry on the blockchain represents more than one transaction, then the blockchain does not record every transaction that has ever occurred on the blockchain. It only records a, p a portion of the transactions that have occurred on the blockchain. So let's say like, you know, Bitcoin gets used pretty widely, um, you know, it's been used by tens of millions of people and in order to accommodate that at one megabyte block sizes you have to have a hundred transactions on the lightning network for every transaction done broadcast on the blockchain so then you would have a fractionally reserved blockchain of one one hundredth uh, and what I mean by that is so if you only one out of one hundred transactions are broadcast on the blockchain then you only have the security or like you only have not only the the security but the auditability uh, and I guess auditability is in some ways security um, but um, so you have security and auditability of knowing that you know the blockchain works uh, when you have a one-to-one -one relationship between transactions and block entries but if you have a fractionally reserved blockchain where you have 100 uh, transactions per block entry then you don't have the same security or auditability because you can't say like you know we have proof that every transaction uh, done on the blockchain has worked because that's what the blockchain is now with Bitcoin SegWit once they uh, do a lightning transaction uh, on the SegWit lightning network and that transaction represents multiple or that once they do a block entry coming from a node on the lightning network and that block entry represents multiple transactions in one block entry uh, things are going to go real poorly uh, or not, they're not going to necessarily go real poorly, but the problem with that is, is that now you've completely changed what Bitcoin's blockchain is, and it can never be reverted. Like, that's it. It's over. It's now something new, and it can never be what it was before. Because before, like, the Bitcoin Cash version of the blockchain is that there's one block entry for every transaction. Uh, with the Bitcoin SegWit uh, blockchain, that's not true. So it's a fractionally reserved version of what Bitcoin Cash is. Um, so that's sort of the issue surviving it or surrounding it is that you get more there's more transactions uh, done off the blockchain uh, than are done on the blockchain so the blockchain does not represent all the transactions that have ever been done and so you can't say that anymore only Bitcoin Cash can say that so you get more blockchain using Bitcoin SegWit because it's a fractionally reserved blockchain without actually having more blockchain it's just like how fractional reserves in the banking system give you more loanable f uh, they give you more loanable funds, but you don't actually have more loanable funds. It's just 
sort of this magic trick. It's sort of fraudulent. Um, as long as the people involved in it know what's going on, it's not fraudulent, but I don't think they really do know what's going on. So this next slide we're going to talk about here, it's not lightning that's the issue. A lot of people think lightning's the issue. Lightning does not make any cryptocurrency a fractionally reserved blockchain because a lightning transaction, if we're talking about just uh, lightning channels, not bi-directional lightning channels, but just one-directional lightning channels, a one-directional lightning channel is uh, its just an open-ended transaction. So it's just a tab. It's like having a bar tab. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. An open-ended transaction is still one transaction. It's just one you haven't closed yet. It's every time you close a transaction, then you want that transaction recorded on the blockchain that you uh, need to put that transaction on the blockchain and pay a fee. So it's not Lightning that's the issue, it's SegWit that is the issue. So what SegWit does is it allows you to have bi-directional payment channels. Um, so the bi-directional payment channels allow the sharing of channels. So like let's say you know Bob owes like $20 to Sarah and Sarah owes $20 to Megabank A uh, and Megabank A has Lightning channels open with Bob and Sarah. Uh, under the Bitcoin Cash version of Lightning, these these two people could have Lightning channels open with the bank, but in order for Bob to pay Sarah, he has to pay Sarah. In order for Sarah to then pay the bank, Sarah has to pay the bank through her own channel. The way that the Lightning Network works, or the SegWit version of the Lightning Network works, is that uh, the Megabank could look at this scenario and their node could say, hey, if we just route the transaction just directly to the Megabank instead of going from Bob to Sarah to the Megabank, Bank, then it's only one transaction and that's true but then you have fractionally reserved the blockchain because you have more off-chain transactions than on-chain so with Bitcoin cash you can use lightning channels which is streaming money which is just an open-ended transaction it's like a tab at a bar where you say hey I'm gonna buy some beers I don't know how many I'm gonna buy yet once I've figured out how many beers I've bought then I'm gonna pay you that's there's no problem with that because you only need to pay a fee you only need to record something on the blockchain like after it's occurred once it's closed out once that transaction Transaction is closed. So lightning channels are fine. It's SegWit that is the issue where you can share somebody else's channel for your transaction. That makes the blockchain something else because now the blockchain does not represent all the transactions that have ever occurred on the network. The blockchain has become fractionally reserved and it'll only, it only represents some of the transactions that have occurred. And the way that it does this is it represents some of the transactions that have occurred but in a way that you can't really figure out what has happened. So there's no more blockchain auditability with the Bitcoin SegWit version of the uh, Lightning Network. And so that's sort of the issue. So again, if we look at this sort of picture here, the Lightning Network is not the issue. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the, this is, is supposed to be interpreted, but what it seems like to me is you've, you've got blocks and then you've got a streaming network, and the streaming network only actually validates on certain blocks. But the way that the Lightning Network works, or the Lightning Channels work, if you're talking about this below where it says millions of transactions and milliseconds of, of delay, uh, they're actually saying that off-chain, you're just having open-ended transactions. Those aren't actual transactions. It's when you close the transaction out that matters. So this part of Lightning where it's just the streaming Lightning, that's not an issue. The part where you have off-chain open-ended transactions. It's just that every time you close a transaction, you need to have a uh, corresponding transaction recorded on the blockchain. And with Bitcoin SegWit, sometimes you'll have a thousand um, transactions that are closed. They're closed off the blockchain, but they're only recorded by one uh, entry in the blockchain. So with Bitcoin Cash, for every trans or for every open-ended Lightning channel that closes, there is one transaction re recorded on the blockchain for this event. With Bitcoin SegWit, uh, for every Lightning channel. Um, or for every Lightning Channel transaction, you can close some, like you can close one, uh, or you can close a thousand channels on the Lightning Network, and you only have to record it once on one block entry on the blockchain for Bitcoin SegWit. So again, that's the issue, is that Bitcoin Cash, every Lightning Channel that closes has one block entry. Bitcoin SegWit, you can have a thousand Lightning Channels close, and there will only be one block entry for it. That's the issue. That's why Bitcoin SegWit is a fractionally reserved blockchain. So what are the issues with the fractional reserve blockchain that um, Bitcoin SegWit creates? So I, again, just and for anyone who's sort of having issues looking at this as a fractionally reserved system, always remember that cryptocurrencies are backed by the blockchain. That's always been, you know, since the beginning of time, people say, well, why do you trust the Bit or Bitcoin? What backs Bitcoin? It's the blockchain. So if you look back to when 
uh, the United States used the dollar and it was backed by gold. It's the exact same thing. And so if you look at what fractional reserves does to uh, a gold banking system that uses a paper dollar, it's the same as what the fractional reserve system of crypto will do when it is backed by the blockchain. So the blockchain backs the cryptocurrency. SegWit allows crypto, which is crypto itself isn't where the value is. The blockchain is the value. Crypto is how you move the value about, but the blockchain is the value. So in crypto or in SegWit, uh, you allow the crypto to expand beyond the block, the, the power and the size of the block. So you have more transactions than the block can actually um, handle, than the block is capable of performing. So it's just like with fractional reserves uh, with the dollar and gold, you create more of the dollar, but you don't create more gold. So with SegWit's version of the blockchain, you create more crypto and you can use crypto more, but you don't have more blockchain. So it's basically a way of saying, yeah, we're not going to do the work. Um, so again, this is the issue is it creates a fractionally reserved blockchain is that, again, you know, with Bitcoin SegWit's version of Lightning, you might have 100 transactions done or closed on the Lightning network, and it's only one transaction closed on the blockchain, and that's the issue. And so if we look at this just like the... Um, fractional reserve system for banks it's you know you deposit 100 bucks in a bank they only have to keep 10 percent so they loan out the other 90 bucks and they continue this again and again and again well the way that the fractional reserve uh, system for the blockchain works is that the nodes they look at transactions and they're like well we want to use as few transactions as pos possible to complete all of these transactions and so they try to close as few channels as possible and so they just keep these channels open so one like the opening of one channel uh, allows them to create more payments even though it's still just one channel so they're fractionally reserving you know lightning channels and uh, that's the issue is that the channels can become you know you, you get more channels than you're supposed to have or you get more use out of channels even though the channels that you're you know you should be creating more channels for each one of these events but you're not you don't actually have the channels for it so just like the fractional reserve system creates more money the uh, for banking uh, the fractional reserve blockchain creates more channels when you don't actually have it. It creates more transactions when you don't actually have anything backing it. So that's that's a big issue. And the, the whole sort of point I really want to hammer this home with for anybody who actually has uses Bitcoin SegWit is if Bitcoin SegWit has a blockchain where the blockchain doesn't show you all the transactions that have occurred, uh, you know, what is backing Bitcoin SegWit? How do you know it works for one? And then two, um, if Bitcoin SegWit, you know, if there's one block entry for every hundred transactions that means that the blockchain only has one one hundredth of the data that something like bitcoin cash would have so that would mean almost by definition that the blockchain on bitcoin cash is you know it's at least got a hundred times more data so you know for a fact it's more valuable you can't say it's a hundred times more valuable but you know it's more valuable because it's got a hundred times more of whatever you know is valuable in the blockchain than what bitcoin segwit does so you know that for a fact so i don't know how you know that you can sort of justify your position that the bitcoin segwit's version of the lightning network is okay if it's a, a fractionally reserved system or fractional reserve blockchain system um, you're basically pretending like you have more blockchain than you do so bitcoin cash will have more blockchain than bitcoin so if blockchain is what gives bitcoin its value isn't bitcoin cash more valuable now i'm not saying it's blockchain data that makes bitcoin more valuable it's the uh, connection of all the net or of all the transactions it's that list that's what gives bitcoin its value it's you know you tr you can trust bitcoin as long as the transaction history goes back and so as long as you know that transaction history keeps continuing forward it grows in value but with bitcoin segwit uh, that transaction history is going to be fractionalized and so aren't you just fractionalizing the value of Bitcoin SegWit um, and I know people have to understand this like market prices do not move until the market understands where prices should be so you know there's a great investor Jim Rogers who has some quote and it goes something along the lines of uh, the markets can be irrational longer than you can stay liquid and all he means by that is you might make the right trades but you still might lose money you know um, so just because Bitcoin SegWit has higher value right now that doesn't mean that these um, predictions won't come true in the long run you know if it, if bitcoin segwit is a fractionally reserved blockchain then it's more insecure and it should have less value than a fully reserved blockchain like bitcoin cash and again this is a long-term prediction um so 
you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen today, but that's that's really the issue. And the final thing that you got to remember is that all fractional reserve systems lead to censor, censorship and tyranny. So how does this work with a fractionally reserved blockchain? Because a lot of people who watch these videos probably understand the Austrian theory of banking, and they understand, you know, why a fractional reserved banking system is bad. But a fractionally reserved blockchain creates different vectors for tyranny, different attack vectors for tyranny and censorship than a fractionally reserved uh, banking system. So we got to understand how exactly this happens. And so this happens because when you have lightning nodes, transaction fees will necessarily increase because lightning nodes allow uh, the uh, owner to collect fees off the blockchain done on the Lightning Network and then pay them for transactions done on the blockchain. And again, there's going to be more transactions on the Lightning Network than that are done on the blockchain. So they'll be able to have a disproportionate control over the fees that are paid. And so it basically means that fees get even higher than they are now. So if fees are $5 now, let's assume they're $50. Well, the, the way that the Lightning Network censors you is it says, unless you use Lightning Channels, you have to pay that fee. And so you know, how many of you are willing to pay a $50 fee per transaction with somebody? Not many. So let's say the Lightning Network, you know, you're going to have these massive uh, super hubs, these super banks, these super nodes uh, that root all the transactions. So what if they all collude together? Like let's say the government gets control of them and they all collude together and say, yeah, we're not going to let these certain people use the money or these certain people. And then Bitcoin has just become a permission-based cryptocurrency. Now, it's not permission-based in that you have to necessarily have permission to use it, but if the fees just keep getting higher and higher, at some point, people are not going to be willing to pay the fees, which means if you use Bitcoin, you have to use the Lightning Network. And so it's not permissionless. It, you're asking Lightning nodes for permission to use their channels, and if they say no to you, then you can't use the network just because you won't be able to pay transaction fees. So that's, a, that's the whole issue with the... Uh, uh, fractional reserve system that Bitcoin SegWit is adopting and that's how it will be attacked afterwards and centralized and tyrannized by large state actors and governments is that if you have like fees will increase as a matter of fact whatever fees are off the lightning network they increase on the lightning network and they increase incredibly rapidly because the lightning nodes can pay any fee that uh, exists because they have their own uh, money coming in uh, to pay those fees like they're getting paid a fee uh, in order to pay the fees that they're going to pay on the blockchain. So they get paid fees on the Lightning Network to pay fees on the blockchain, whereas people who are not Lightning nodes do not get paid those. So if you're not a Lightning node, then you won't be able to pay the fee. And then because that fee can get larger and larger and larger, as these Lightning nodes can just keep pushing the smaller people out of the market until it's just a few huge nodes. And these few huge nodes, it's, if it's just a couple, you know, if it's just like, you know, three, four, even if it's like, you know, a hundred, they can still censor out any person that they want. Just say, we're not going to... Uh, route your ch your transaction through our channel, so you have to pay the network fee, and if fee is at that time, or you know, a hundred to a thousand dollars, which it could theoretically be if you just look at scaling Bitcoin globally. Uh, technically speaking, you can only have like four thousand transactions a block. So if Bitcoin was used globally, I don't know what the fee would be per block, but you know, or something like that, you know. But uh, you could assume that you could have fees of you know a hundred to a thousand dollars to even ten thousand dollars per transaction done on the uh, blockchain if you can only have you know four thousand transactions per block. Uh, you know, a thousand dollar fee is only four million dollars in fees, and depending on how many transactions that's split amongst, that might not be that much, you know. Um, so you can really easily censor people using the Lightning Network. Um, the Lightning Network as offered by Bitcoin SegWit. And this really terrifies me because one thing that has sort of terrified me since the beginning of cryptocurrencies is the idea that cryptocurrencies would be controlled because a pseudonymous blockchain, uh, like if someone can tr control and censor it, you know, it's a completely cashless system. So if you don't have access to the network, you can't do anything. Um, and so like the amount of control someone would have with something like the Lightning Network, it sort of terrifies me. Um, again, I'm still invested in Bitcoin SegWit. I still own quite a large share of it. Uh, I'm not planning on selling for a while, but this terrifies me long term. I'm not buying any more Bitcoin SegWit because I really don't like this network. I probably will buy more Bitcoin Cash. I was going to buy some Bitcoin Cash recently, but bought Monero instead, and now I can buy more Bitcoin Cash with uh, Monero than I could have bought earlier. So it was a good choice, but uh, you know, Bitcoin Lightning under the SegWit model, it's sort of terrifying. And again, it's all because it's a fractionally reserved blockchain and this is a big issue. And again, this fractional reserve blockchain issue I'm talking about, it's not exactly the same as fractional reserve banking systems, but uh, just like fractional reserve banking systems lead to uh, tyranny and centralization, so do fractionally reserved blockchains. So I really don't like Bitcoin SegWit. I think the 
Bitcoin SegWit implementation of the Lightning Network will basically kill everything that Bitcoin has set out to be. But, you know, I may be wrong. And again, I think this will take years for this to occur. So this might not occur for, you know, it might be decades. I don't even know. But uh, this is just an issue that I see coming with Bitcoin um, is the centralization that is involved with the uh, Bitcoin SegWit Lightning Network. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, there will be more videos coming out soon.